is BBC's Night Sleeper the next great thriller on TV? Or does it derail before it reaches its destination? Let's find out. Walks and wonders, with some old bloke talking about nothing. So I've recently completed watching Night Sleeper on the BBC, which is a six-part TV series, a thriller, suspense thriller, I guess. So here's just a few of my thoughts about the series. Just for those of you who haven't yet watched it, you'll be pleased to know there's no spoilers in this video. I won't tell you the ending or any significant plot twists. But we'll just talk about the series. So this series is set on the night sleeper from Glasgow to London. So it's, um, it sets off in the dark, obviously it's a night sleeper. And being a suspense thriller, the story takes uh, turn after dark turn and so the the atmosphere so it mostly happens on the train on the night sleeper uh, the atmosphere is uh, a little bit dark um, just through lack of lighting really and like all good thrillers I guess the uh, the enemy is unseen we can't see who's causing the problems. But very quickly all the passengers on the train are in peril and it feels like no one on the train can really save them. And so the other location is, um, is it MI5 or something? But like one of the intelligence services have to take control of the situation. Though at this point they're still unsure whether it's terrorism or, or what the issue is, but uh, there's now a train that may be out of control speeding down from Glasgow to London. And of course what drives the plot are the characters, the personalities, particularly those on board the train. I suppose initially in any crisis that we might have in real life, when we're in a group, you initially assume that everyone is a reasonable person like you and that everyone thinks like you. So we'll just get together, pool our thoughts and we'll be out of this situation in no time. I mean that really happens in real life but also it's no good for a suspense thriller. So obviously lots of different personalities on the train. You've got a um, lady who's disabled, she's also a lawyer. Uh, oh the train staff, you've got, yeah, you've got the conductor of the train and you've got the uh, woman that's running the, the bar a meal at the buffet car. Then you've got a few people in first class, one or two of whom are a bit arrogant, shall we say. In actual fact, the discussion on the train about the situation reminded me a little bit. There's an old film, showing me age now, it's an old film that was made before I was born, I hasten to add, called Twelve Angry Men. You may have seen it. And it's, uh, it's an American film and it's about the, um, the jury room in a trial for a teenager who's been uh, charged with murder. And in that film, it's, uh, it's the height of a heat wave. Everyone's too hot. They just want to go home. There's a basketball game that's going to kick off that a couple of them want to see. So they just want to kind of get the, the uh, jury deliberations over. So they 11 are of the 12 vote for to convict the teenager but one man stands up and fights for the rights of the teenager and asks a lot of questions and that's that's basis of 12 angry men and i mentioned that because the scenes of the people stuck on the train uh, they've all they've all got little secrets obviously you're gonna do that in a story about peril so what's driving their decisions, what's driving their thinking, what's driving their anger in some cases. And over the period of the six episodes, some of those secrets are revealed. We then discover that the government minister for transport, who is in charge of the railways technically, is on the train. Oh no. But for reasons that become clear in the series. Initially she doesn't want anyone to know she's on the train. And the other thing which frustrates the rescue attempt is that the, um, and this, this isn't a spoiler because it, you know, it's sort of part of the premise at the beginning uh, of the 
uh, you know, in episode one, that there's a phone blocker, um, you know, a device that blocks mobile phones, so nobody can phone onto the drone or off the drone. But there's one lifeline. I think it's an oil rig worker or something who has a satellite phone that isn't affected by the blocking. And this is the one line of communication between MI5 and the train. But there's more complications, which I won't go into because that would be a spoiler. As I said in the last video, we like, a, my wife and I, we like a TV series. We don't binge watch. I, I have in the past, if I'm watching something on my own, I'll be honest, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, but in these TV series uh, we're looking at, we don't binge watch. What we want is one episode a night. So we, we've completed our day at home. We've had dinner. Just want to kick back and relax and want to be taken to another world. That's why we like stories, uh, films and six part TV series or any part TV series. And if you can get a good one, even better. And I think this is a good one. I have to say we felt on the edge of our seat just when you think you've solved it. And this is the strength of the writing, I think. Just when you think you've solved one mystery it's suddenly revealed that no what you were thinking is not right in fact you're very wrong i did know some of the cast in this but what i found helpful there was quite a lot of the cast i didn't know and uh, i sometimes find that helpful not to know any of the actors because otherwise we are quite prone to <laughs> playing the wasn't he in wasn't she in that thing and you start having a discussion and someone looks up the facts on IMD. IMB, is it? And uh, IMD, uh, to see if they were in certain films or TV shows. And I really try not to do that because A, I want to believe that the character the actor is playing is real, you know, to get into the story. And I think the discussion about were they in this, were they in that? It's better left when the movie's over or the TV series is over, or at least the episode's over. But humans are curious creatures, so we don't always escape with that. But I have to say, Night Sleeper did have us on the edge of our seat. If you're nervous about train travel, it's probably not the, <laughs> not the TV series for you. I was trying to think the last time I went on a train to London or anywhere a long time ago I don't use the train very much but strangely after years of not using the train we are actually planning a trip to London at some point this year and those of you who have seen Night Sleeper do feel free to comment below and I'll just say uh, you can discuss spoilers and that in the comments if you've not seen the series don't read the comments <laughs> or don't read other people's comments you can feel free to comment how realistic it was that someone could take control of a train remotely, I don't know. But in this day and age, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. And I guess it's, it's got to be near reality, otherwise, you know, the story wouldn't work. So if you enjoy this TV Tuesday, don't forget to give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Hit the red subscribe button, that's very important. And the little bell icon, get notifications of new videos. And I'll see you next time if I've not been hijacked on a train.